Here we go. Welcome, everybody. Yeah. Welcome to this webinar, which is for the Today in World Childless Week, the Single and Childless. And we're talking about the disenfranchised grief of childless and single uh, people. And did we really grieve? Um, yes or no? The question, because it's never really acknowledged. I am joined today by uh, Naomi Goodell. Gadel. And yep. Gadel, thank you. And Bibi Lynch. Um, I want to start by doing, um, I'm coming from Australia, speaking from Australia, and I do want to start with an acknowledgement of country. Um, I begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today and pay my respects to their elders, past and present. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. We acknowledge the stories, traditions, and living cultures of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples on this land and commit to building a brighter future together. Thank you. I want um, to, to start just by a little bit of intro on, on who we are and what our background is. And I've, I had prepared some questions because there's so much that we can talk about being single and childless. Um, and I wanted to have this as a, a conversation between the three of us, between myself, Naomi and, and Bibi, where we just talk about, based on some questions, what it's like to be single and, and childless and the experience that we have. Um, and uh, for anyone who's not single or childless to understand from our perspective. Um, so some may know me, um, but I want to pass over to Naomi first, just to give a bit of an intro. I know Naomi um, has done some, has her own business and creates um, uh, an opportunity for people to live the life um, that they, they want um, by the, in their creative space. But Naomi, I'll, I'll let you do an intro and tell, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, thanks. I'm excited to be here to have this chat and just give exposure to what this kind of journey has been like. Um, I'm calling in from Bangkok, Thailand. I am from Colorado um, and been here about three years. I'm 46 years old and I do um, work with creatives to bring their ideas to life. And many times that's after um, going through a rough season <laughs> and really wanting to figure out what's next and stuff. So I really enjoy that. And I love the creative space and the creative mind um, because I think it's a good place to be and it makes the world more beautiful. So. Thanks, Naomi. Yeah. Uh, Bibi, welcome, welcome to us today. Thank you. Lovely to see you. Thank you for making me wake up really early. <laughs> what time is it where you are? It's a healthy 6 p.m. where I am. So um, I'm just drinking back. Oh, you? Know. Yes, <laughs> cheers to you. Cheers to you. I'm on, Thanks I'm on for waking up. have to get me going. Um, <laughs> My name's Bibi. Um, I'm a journalist and broadcaster. Um, I'm 56. Um, yeah, single and childless. And it's really interesting. I, I'd only ever thought about um, if that experience was a different experience because I'm single. Um, when Jodie Day started talking about it, Jodie Day, you'll all know from Gateway Women, brilliant, brilliant, majestic Jodie Day. Um, and I... And then I hadn't really thought about it in, in depth until we were talk, we were I was invited onto this webinar. So I think this will be a really interesting chat because I think it is um it is a different experience, isn't it? It, it is. It is. And I, I we we'll get into that as we talk a bit more. Um the this morning, this evening, for wherever you are today, Tuesday, the 13th of September, um, or whenever you're listening to it. Um I, a little bit about me, I'm 49, so I'm still, I can still legitimately say I'm in my 40s, but I am in my 50th decade <laughs> on the brink um, here in Australia, but I was brought up in New Zealand, um, happily uh, living uh, and adventuring in my 20s, traveling an awful lot, not really thinking about having children um single and dating and thinking that assuming that my time would come I think like a lot of people would and I got into my 30s and had different relationships and you know some good some bad 
and it just didn't happen. And then I had what I would call my my disenfranchised grief during that 30s, but I didn't know that was what was happening because nobody talked about it and it wasn't anything that I knew how to deal with. It wasn't in my my guidebook. Um, no one had had spoken about it. I probably Googled it and I might have seen something about Jodie's work, but they weren't doing anything in Australia at that time. Gratefully, they are now. So there are support networks and there's an awful lot that's around now as far as um, groups and support groups, which is fantastic. Um, but my first question that I wanted to come back and ask um, of you both is how do you identify because this came up for me the other day, like, do you say when people, it's the worst social thing, right, when you meet up with some people and they would start by saying, uh, do you have family? Um, how, how would you identify or respond to that? Like, do you say, uh, I'm single and childless? I know that I wouldn't necessarily. And the other thing that we're defined as really, um, infertile which to me just sounds horrific right I would never identify as that but I'm wondering for you guys how how you would respond in that situation how do you what how do you describe yourself Phoebe um I describe myself as short and angry I am um, <laughs> <laughs> I do I, how, I oh god it's such a such a difficult one I think people will say that less to me now, I'll ask if I have a family now less because I've been so vocal about it, about saying, you know, that I ha don't have. And also that it's, you, you know, it's an inappropriate thing to say. If someone, I have been places though, and someone said, you know, do you have, you know, do you have children? You say, no. And then they do the, the poor Jen head tilt. And I guess if you're gonna ask a question that's that personal, and I know it's a commonplace question, but ask, find something else that's commonplace. What's your style sign or something? I don't know. But if you ask that question, have the decency to have a response that doesn't make both of us feel really crap. Do you know what I mean? There's something around it. I don't, I mean, someone on Twitter, and I think it was Tammy, and it was such a lovely thing, because I write and talk a lot about not having children, and I don't happily write and talk a lot about not having children. There's a real emotional cost to me writing, uh, talking about not having children. And my story quickly was that sexy term, social infertility. I just didn't meet anyone. Perfectly able to have children, just didn't meet anyone. Um, and it's, it's, I, th I think if you're going to, you know, I'm not going to go into any conversation going, oh, well, hi, I'm Bibi, I'm almost five foot one and I don't have kids, because that's an instant, because I see myself as more, more than that. And I remember Tammy saying that on, on Twitter, and it was such a lovely thing. She said, I see all of you. I see everything that you are. And within that, one thing is that you don't have children. And actually, that could be, I see that as nothing but negative, because one of your questions is, I won't, won't spoil it, one of your questions made me go, is she drunk? You know, there's, there's not a positive answer to this question. <laughs> is Penny drunk when she's when she's emailing me? But um, but one one interesting, I think, um, personality positive of being in our situation. And I do talk a lot, and I apologise. I'm going everywhere. I haven't been waiting long. Is if I think it makes you more empathetic. You know, the whole thing about as a mother. And the shorthand is, as a mother, I understand. As a mother, I have the heart. And as a mother, for some crazy reason, because I gave birth, I'm more, I'm kinder, I'm more empathetic, I'm, you know, blah, 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 my heart is bigger. That hasn't been my experience. There are brilliant mothers, there are terrible mothers. <clears throat> there are brilliant people, there are terrible people. Um, but I find, as a group, to a man and woman, the childless, to me, if they're unhappily, have more empathy and are kinder and, and more broad-minded. So to answer your question, I don't know how I describe myself. If someone says, it, it's, I mean, if someone says, do you have children? I'll just say no. And I put it back to them. And I go, okay, you, have, you brought this into the conversation. Good luck, mate. And let, let, them, let them see what they're gonna do. But so how do you describe yourself? If someone said, went up to you and went, oh, hi, I'm BB. I'm a journalist, I'm a broadcaster, and you, would you bring up your kids straight away, your status straight away? Absolutely not. And I, I think I wrote something in this last, um, for, for this uh, World Childless Week, actually, where I, I said that being single and childless is the least interesting thing about me. Mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. there's so much more that that I have that who I am. It's an element of me. It, 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 you know, it, it's something that is part of me but it's not what defines me. 
So, yeah, mm -hmm. I think I refer to it as the, but I, I wouldn't say that to someone, oh, oh well, I'm, <laughs> I'm single and childless and that's the least interesting thing about me. I would start by probably talking more about the fact that I'm from New Zealand because everyone likes to have a crack at New Zealanders. You know? <laughs> but I bet, yeah. and I don't want to put words into your mouth, but I wonder if you being single and childless, um, that has formed you in a way that's actually, it might be that you think the least interesting thing about you, but it could be one of the most powerful things about you in that I bet it's changed you an awful lot and I, I bet nothing but for the good. Mm -hmm. and, and it's the reason that, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to this too, but I'm happy to go on a divergence, is one of the reasons that I get to have been able to travel an awful lot in the last 20 years. And because of that, those are things, elements that make me grow as a human being that I see as advantages in being able to, the experience of empathy. Yeah. I'm going to let Naomi. Yes. What do you, what do you think, Naomi? How, how well, you... I think it's, yeah, I think it depends on where I'm at, how I'm feeling that day and what, you know, some days I can be more snarky, you know, like, or some days it might be, no, I don't. And it's the most heartbreaking thing I've ever experienced, you know, or the direct no, or whatever else comes to mind at the time. So it, like, I've kind of gone the gamut depending on where I am on my grief journey and how comfortable I am in a situation. Um, I feel like because I've gone through the rougher season of it, that I will probably get a bit snarky because I do want people to sit in their stupid introductions or questions and really make them think of that's not the first thing we need to lead with. No. And it'll come up in conversation if I do, mm. right? Like, most likely and so why are we leading with that or why are we leading with relationship status yeah like you guys were saying we are much more than that and so can we think of other questions yeah. that really tell us like how do you like to spend your days right like Which what are your interests what thing, makes you yeah. I agree and it's such a big social thing that that is the first thing that people think of to ask when there are so many other things that you could but are people doing that because that's how I, are people yeah. doing that because that's how they identify themselves? That's, that's exactly how they look at them. You know, they, they identify themselves just by define themselves just by being a parent or not buying being a parent. I have. Do you tell me what you two think about this? I have people that um, I think look at me and that's all they think because all they talk to me about is me not having children and it is the worst thing that's ever happened to me and I've had as my friend Gemma said well done having a life so shit you made money out of it I've had loads of horrible <laughs> stuff happen to me <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing and and this and it's 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 viscerally de devastating and I've there's two things I find it really interesting you to say that you're further on in your grieving journey because I'm not at all so I, I need advice on that. Um, and I can't remember the other thing I was going to say was, I don't know, I just, I think it's, it's, I really can't remember what I was going to say. That's 56 for you. It's really um, extraordinary. Go in with another question and I'll find, I'll remember what I was saying. Well, I'm going to pick up on something because um, someone put in the chat actually that that they attempted to, to say, oh, I'm child free. And mm -hmm. I, I think that that is, I, I'm going to start with that right at the beginning because I think people can feel easier to say that they're child free than to say they're child less because there's a whole bunch of assumptions that are, are made around when you might introduce or say suggest that you're childless and I, I have to admit that I would never in the beginnings to a stranger introduce myself as childless or probably in the, the initial conversations if I was ever to say anything and maybe that I'm child free purely because of all of the assumptions that are made behind childless I'm not less anything I've had an experience that has been very distressing and it's one that I wouldn't wish on anyone to have to go through um, but I don't want people to think less of me because of it can I jump in and I keep talking but I'm really passionate about this I think the problem with not saying you're childless is you then don't let people you don't you 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 go back to the grief being disenfranchised because you're not acknowledging the grief it's not you personally but one is not if you, if you say you're child free that's brilliant if you liberate feel liberated by not having children but I feel imprisoned by not having children on certain days certain days I don't and so for me to say I'm child free as opposed to childless 
in a way those conversations should be opened up because that's that's why a lot of us aren't grieving because we're not allowed to grieve because we're all, all we're doing is catering to people mentally that don't want us to acknowledge this pain for whatever reason it, it impacts on them and there's a bigotry around it and if none of those things are looked at you can't then get to the grieving because you're still at the angry 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 railing against the bigotry you can't get to the grieving and i think by it, in a way if people are childless and feel childless, but are using child free to just get out of that situation, just to make it a little bit easier. It's defeating the the purpose and it, it's kind of creating, it's perpetuating that situation because we have to be in a situation where we can say, this grief for me, maybe for everyone watching, is as bad as losing a child. I'm, I'm gonna get annihilated for saying that, but that's how it feels mm -hmm. for me. And so I should be allowed to say that because if I don't say that and people don't understand that, people will treat it, they won't, uh, 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 you know, acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. I, I, totally I want to commend that. you for saying it, baby, because yeah. I, I think that you should be allowed to, and I think that it is on a parallel of, um, I, I, I'm going to share that I went through that immense um, disenfranchised grief for a big period of my uh, late 30s going into my early 40s, and I had no idea what was happening because it wasn't talked about. I was, you know, that single and childless. And then it wasn't until I had an experience in my mid forties that I got to suddenly talk about it because it was something that people did talk about. And that was that I had a miscarriage. And it, that is a stark contrast to the experience that I had. And it made me realize I, I suddenly had something, an element of, you know, to, to talk on a platform to talk about things. Yeah. And I never had that. And so that this, this, what we're talking about right now is really important to me because I want for, for the voice, for us to have voices of what that's like and not having anywhere to vocalize how we feel. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Naomi, did you have anything else you want to say on that? Or I can... Well, no, I, I totally agree with that because I was in a conversation the other day where somebody says they lost a child and she's like, that's the biggest grief you can ever walk. And I wasn't in a space to like be like, I don't agree with that because I feel like I have lost my children, I hope for, you know, I may not have seen them in physical form, but it's still that dream, that desire to grow with somebody as, you know, and so and I just, you know, that whole thing of comparing grief and all that stuff does nobody any good, no. but just to be acknowledged, like it's, it's grief. But that's and, what, um, yeah, that's but what it's what all hierarchical on the grief yeah. levels and it's not true. You're totally right. You'll be unsurprised to hear I've had quite a lot of therapy. <laughs> One of my therapists was lovely and she was trying to emphasize but she had children and she said, um, and I know I'm aware I just sounded like Andrea Ledson when I just said that she had, I have children. And she said, we were talking about it and she couldn't get her head into it until she um, cemented the image. So she said, well, yeah, I mean, it's like someone's kid could die. It had to be like you, with the miscarriage, it had to be something that other people could go, oh, right, I understand that. But can I ask, why don't people understand it? Because people like us and Steph have talked about this. I've written about this for over 10 years now. And I think, you know, when people say, yeah, I never really, oh God, I never really understood. I never really thought about that. You know, the, the whole thing of like, you know, hardworking families. I never thought that would be offensive. But now you've said it. Yeah, I can see that's offensive. But people still say it. So, so are people choosing to perpetuate this? You know, they they don't not know that now because it's been said for over ten years, even longer. We we pulled, you know, we we pointed this this bigotry yeah. out to people, and they still choose to do it. So the people that say, the people that say, "Oh, do you have kids?" There's no way they haven't read a feature about people saying, "Don't say that." Mm -hmm. That that's true, and I'm wondering. Yes, there will be that that article which has popped up, but in the diluted in the huge number of articles that are around family and are around um you know the inf infer infertility being an issue that this, that disenfranchised single and childless is very much diluted i don't think it gets enough attention and the people who are in it like like us and i know 
Bibi and Steph, you've, you've, and, and Jody from the book and work that she's done have done an awful lot of work to, to talk about it. But I just don't think the people who are in it feel like they've got a voice enough to talk socially about it. Because there's a difference between reading something and then it translating into the talk around the barbecue. Like, can, can you it just feel really comfortable to talk about this stuff? And, I, you know, I, I didn't. I wouldn't have back in, back in the day when I was in my 30s. I didn't feel at all like. I just felt super awkward when things would come up, when someone would talk about, you know, someone who was single going through IVF. And I just got mad. I was like, how can you? It was a man, actually, an uncle, worse, who was talking about it and it made me incredibly uncomfortable. I was thinking, how do you think that you have any right to talk about this when you're talking about exactly my experience? But I was so uncomfortable and upset by it that I couldn't respond in that moment. But, you know, so I think that more people need to talk about it at the barbecues. I love that you're saying around the barbecue. <laughs> it would be very from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> you're totally right. And then the other side, and I'm neg neg going to negate everything I've just said. It's also so deeply personal. And for, for many of us, the worst thing that's happened. And again, because I write about it and talk about it a lot, people feel that they can talk to me about it whenever they want. They'll see me and they start talking about not having children guess what? I'm not emotionally equipped every minute of every day to talk about that. Mm -hmm. So I, so I know I'm confusing the matters by saying we should talk about it, but it's also deeply personal and, and we shouldn't feel obliged to, no one deserves an explanation from us. I think people, the onus should be on other people to be sensitive around it. I don't know. Yeah. And that's like what you said, it just depends on what season we're in, yeah. how we're feeling that day. I mean, we still have cycles, right? So like right now I'm more emotional than I would have been last week. And yeah. so it's like, do I feel confident enough to use my voice where they'll maybe hear me a little bit, or am I going to be in a state where I'm maybe crying and then all that other stuff comes into it too? Like, oh, poor girl. <laughs> like, And then they don't hear anything, you um, know? And so, or just all those other things that come up when you're sad well. that people well, don't sit with. You want people to sit with stuff. You want you want knowledge to be out there. You want the conversation to be had. You want people to understand, but you also don't want pity. Yep. It's a yep. it's a fucking excuse my friend say, but it's a fucking nightmare. Yep. And here's the thing going and back. That, the, that, that's where I was coming single. from with that childless thing identifying because as soon as you say you're less, it's like I'm trying to draw myself into the world and the step forward, my view and what my outlook is going forward and to, to embrace that. And as soon as I, I don't want that look, I don't want that look from someone. Mm. Like, no, yeah, stop it. Yeah. And that's why what Tammy said was so lovely because she just went, it's part of you. Mm -hmm. That was so, I mean, you know, but she's, I'm sure, an, an exception. But that was kind of, I had a conversation with someone recently, actually. It was over... Um, like a DM, so it wasn't it wasn't the, the wasn't conducive to having a really brilliant conversation about it. Except it was a really brilliant conversation about it, and he was really sweet. And it was all because I was I got upset about something, and I was saying, you know, I feel like, and again, it was that whole thing. He mentioned not having children. I just thought, I'm, it's a Friday morning. I'm not ready for this conversation. <laughs> I've, you know, I've just flossed, and then it, and then and it got into this really heavy, deep conversation, and it just made me feel really uncomfortable, but he was, it was lovely, because I was able to say to him why I was upset, and then he, and he's a parent, and he was coming back, and he was explaining, you know, his side of it, and I mean, maybe it's as simple as that, and conversations can be had, and then once they are, that's the, that's the key, you want to have the conversation once, and then that to be enough, <laughs> you don't want to have to keep reliving that conversation, because to me, it's like reliving the trauma all the time, I don't know about you two, yeah. Do you know, I have a group of mates that I've created um, over the COVID period and we get together and none of us have children. And, and one of the best things about it is there is no, no talk about um, kids pick up, school pick up, exchange, um, get, you know, new shoes. It's none of that. We just get to talk about us. And, and it's something that until you get to have that, you just appreciate how, how lovely it is and how it's free of any, you know, um, the, the looks or inference of 
oh, um, you can, you're not part of the conversation. You're, you're fully, it's the most liberating, it's the, the most wonderful feel to, feeling to have a group of people that you can hang out with and be so just comfortable yourself. Yeah. Can I tell you something that a friend said to me recently? This was, She's an, obviously an ex-friend now. Um, and I'm just doing this literally to offload. It's nothing to do with the subject. It is a little bit to do with the subject. It's not to do with the single. Anyway, she's married with children. And we went to the pub and there was a bloke there I think she fancied. And he um, was talking about, he started the conversation, apropos of nothing, I might add. And he just said that um, it matters more now if he dies because he has children. Whoa. And she agreed, my friend who knows my story. Isn't that? I don't know if she did it just to just to curry favour with him. It was it was the <laughs> I had I've had a the big debate about that, this yeah. one, baby, when COVID was happening and hospitals were become, becoming overwhelmed and someone decided to have a dialogue on Facebook. And we all know that all sorts of mm. things can come up on Facebook uh, without filter. But um, the fact that if they had to decide between a mother with three kids and, and someone without, well, of course they should save the mother. And I went, well, what if that person is actually creating technology to save our, our future in some way um, there's no way that you can just decide because someone has children that they become more important. I, I totally agree, baby, and my, my eyes disappear in the back of my head when I hear that sort of conversation. And the best thing about that story is when I left, I got a bus home, and on the bus journey home, I was asked to move out of my seat so um, a family could have the seats. <laughs> what <laughs> well, did I you do? What did you do? The... Huh? What did you do? Guess what I did? I stayed in my seat. Good on you. Well yeah. done. Can I, can I ask about um, when you thought about this subject for the webinar title, why did you choose single and childless? What, what do you think, what was the, the meaning behind it for you? Uh, because of that experience that I had when I was in my end of my 30s and it was so not recognised. So that disenfranchised grief of um, I, what, nothing related to it. And my experience later where I mentioned that I had the miscarriage and then I looked back and nobody recognised what I was going through. I was going through an awful lot of pain and I was angry and frustrated at times. I felt, um, why, why is this happening for other people, you know, my age and my, and my circle of friends that are having kids or, you know, have met their person and they're talking about um, going and you know, doing IVF together or, or having children. And what is it? What is it that I'm feeling that I, I feel like I genuinely love my friends that's creating me to have this frustration? Um, and I didn't know. I just felt the times I felt awful, the times I felt completely uh, isolated and left out. And had I, had I known what I was going through, I probably could have progressed and passed it a lot smoother. Um, but instead, I think it was a bit more, it was more elongated than I, I would have wished for anyone. How, yeah. did you both, how did you both go through it though? Because you both said that you were kind of like different seasons. I love that expression. How did, how did you both move through it? Naomi? Yeah. Um, a lot of <laughs> wailing crying in bed um just feeling it you know and I'm I know that another season may come where I'm gonna have to go through it again um just with like I don't know I think as you age it's gonna be different from what I hear um I think putting language to it and the process of what it looks like to actually live with grief because it's like we never get over it so it's like okay here's a wave of grief I can maybe like look around what's triggering this um I really have leaned into self-care mm -hmm. and because I'm single I'm just like okay I'm gonna totally lean into that and some people might think it's totally selfish and self you know whatever but I'm like it's only me who cares <laughs> like you know, I'm going to do what I need to do. And so I think that I did some grief recovery work. Um, 
which has been really helpful just to release more of that shame, really just owning like, I did nothing wrong in this journey to get me here. It just kind of happened. Um, obviously, you know, you can still hear the quiver in my voice. So it is something that gets me here and there, but I do feel like I'm in a season of joy again. Like I have energy to go do stuff, which feels really good. Um, because I like to do stuff, but going through that deep season, don't want to do anything, you know, you're just kind of surviving and stuff. And, um, yeah, so I don't, I think it looks different for everybody. I mean, I had gateway women to like, you know, find people that were going through the same thing to talk things over with. And, um, and I know it's just gonna change. So I don't know there's not one thing, right? It's just writing out maybe time because I didn't know or experience the deepness of it to like my few years ago, like early forties. And then I could piece it together. Like what is it, what I was experiencing like late twenties, thirties as I was seeing friends get married, have kids. And I was like, oh, okay. Those are little griefs that I didn't know what was happening. And so I think just having the language to be like, this is normal to be feeling because this is a great loss. Um, trying not to compare my situation with anybody else's has helped to some of just those shifts in my mind um, have helped me kind of move forward a little bit. So, yeah. I'm going to ask another question. Do, do, do either of you have an emergency contact or do you know who it is? Because this is it depends we're, on the day. <laughs> I, right, we're single. So who do we? Who do? Who do you know will be there? Who's got a key and knows where to where to find your undies if you go to hospital? Who who knows what your details are for your your will if something happens? You know who's who's your person? You want you two are mine now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they can. <laughs> Yeah, send, me mean, the, how, send me the details later. Yeah. I will. How depressing is that, though? I mean, in terms of emergency contact, in terms of if I'm feeling really terrible, who do I turn to and who do I call? I'm really lucky because my friends that are parents, I guess because I've talked about it so much, are so amazing and brilliant. And my friends who aren't parents are just as amazing and brilliant. So I'm really lucky with my network of friends. But in term, but but that is so different to being in a couple, isn't it? Assuming it's a good couple, right? Let's just assume that it's not, you know, it's a nice relationship. Mm. How that must have felt when we were all going through what we were going through. Well, I mean, I guess, you know, it might have been a different outcome for in a couple, not necessarily, of course. But to have that support would just be, I can't even imagine what that would have been like. I, is, there, is there a negative to being in a couple in this situation? Is there more social pressure? Is there more societal pressure? don't know I'm just to, look, to... to look after your partner in that way to have children in the first place if you don't have children and you're in a couple is that is that looked at more thoroughly than if you're single and don't have children I, I only just I had a conversation today with a work colleague um, and she said that she had chosen not to have children um, but the she said when she introduces herself and someone asks if they've had children and she says no she said the look on their face like we would boil their children um it, she's like I don't I don't dislike children yeah you know we just didn't so there is definitely I can see there's assumptions uh, as a if you're in a couple um you know and I've been in a relationship and I was 40 something and someone was like oh, oh so you guys are happy when are you going to have kids I'm like I know I look young for my age, but yeah, no, no. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you, but no. <laughs> yeah, I think with couples, it's just different, different hardships, right? There's pros and cons to each. So we don't like nobody gets <laughs> away with no kind of peer pressure or yeah. societal pressure or anything like that. It just looks different Yeah. Um, because yeah we're looked at like well she couldn't even find somebody kind of thing you know which is ridiculous so what's wrong with her yeah 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 people think that? I, I 
think people I say do. it. Like I, you, I would think, look, if I was looking on a dating site when I went through, you know, d- different periods of dating and you'd look and talk to someone and they'd be like a guy that hasn't had kids and I wouldn't even think about it, but I'd be thinking, oh, he doesn't have kids. Mm, what's happened? And not even realizing, well, what are they thinking about me? I'm the same. I haven't met my person. I haven't had kids. Um, what does that say about me? I don't know. I've been having I've been having too much of a good time and I thought about it too late. You know? But no, you don't no one knows that through a through an app. Anyway. Yeah. Did you no, I mean, did you have an emergency contact? Do you know who your person is? I mean, it depends because it's been interesting, like living overseas, like I would have a friend, oh. but then when they left, mm-hmm. you know, they moved back home. I'm like, okay, who do I pick now? So it just kind of depends. I have so many emergency <laughs> people. Sometimes I'll use my parents, even though they're in the state. Sometimes I'll use a friend that's local, depending on what it is. Um, I hate asking people to be my emergency. That is so funny so too. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that like, you're in a relationship and it's an assumed responsibility that you have someone you can just write down. It's that having to go and ask someone is such a stretch and if you've got like you're surrounded by some beautiful friends baby then you know um you you've got someone's name in your head that you can write down and, and you know we are I'm lucky to have people around me but when when a moment comes and something happens uh I'm like oh who's right in this moment who's that right person and do I have to let them know it's not like there is that one person that you can call on um, it's a who's right for the situation so yeah I don't assume you're freaking have... me out I was assumed I'd live forever <laughs> now I've got to try <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get another piece that cut that's really tricky <laughs> yeah. another stress today thanks thanks ladies <laughs> what's, what's all right because now we're, we're there for you so don't you know, <laughs> yeah yep. feel a little feel that's a little right. bit easier um, bachelors versus spinsters what do you think are they are they totally outdated terms that we shouldn't be using anymore? Um, I personally don't even. I, I wouldn't want to be a bachelorette. I want to be a bachelor. The, the old definition of what a bachelor is. I want that. I want to be um, be able to to live my life life as I like. And if I get sick, people come around with you know containers of food to to look after me. And oh, you poor thing. Um, spinster is so like oh you've been left on the shelf I don't know it, it, unless we're going to redefine it um the old definitions of what bachelor and spinster are I'm going with a bachelor but I don't know Naomi what do you think well I like the spinster because weren't they like the spinners of yarn like wool to yarn is that what some of that history is I heard I haven't researched much of it but when I kind of put my mind around that kind, I'm fine because I'm a crafter. <laughs> I'm like, if I just get a craft right. all day, you know. Um, but yeah, I think that is wishful thinking of how other people see it, though, as far as what maybe the more recent spinster connotations have been. And so I think we can rewrite it, but it's going to take some work and some talking about it and some kind of unraveling what has been you know perpetuated in movies or books or other things and so I don't know I don't put a lot of whatever just because people aren't saying hey she's a spinster like I'm not hearing it personally um really so it doesn't bother me too much that's true it's not as much in today's vocabulary of of what uh how we would describe people I know Jody. Day is referring to herself as an apprentice crone now and I quite like that I I, I aspire to be an apprentice crone <laughs> Bibi I don't what do you think on that one I think it sounds like the battle of the bands doesn't it bachelor versus spinsters um, I, think, I think words are really important but I think words lose their clout they, they seem to me such archaic words um, I mean, if you look at the words bachelor it used to be media code for gay man, you know, that would be that, that yeah, you know, he's a well-known bachelor and in the press that's meant, that meant what that meant. Um, mm. 
Bachelor seems like a warmer, rounder word, and spinster is pointy and nasty and sounds a bit aggressive. But if anyone's going to look at us and call us spinsters, they can go, you know what, themselves. Do you know what I mean? If, if it's all connected with, you know, looking old and worthless. What, what I will say is, so I'm, I'm a good 10 years old, you know, I'm, I'm 56. I was talking to Trish Halpin, former editor of um, Red and Marie Claire, and she has a, a pod called Post, Postcard from Midlife, brilliant woman. And we were saying how lucky to be in our 50s at this time in the world, because being in your 50s now is not how being fit in your 50s was even 10 years ago, <clears throat> excuse me. And I'm hoping that's the same with not having children. I hope that changes. After railing against, I've got something my arm, after railing that it hasn't changed for so long, when I talk about my, my, I'm just thinking about my niece Ellie, my niece Ellie doesn't have prejudice in that way. And, you know, either, either way, and I don't know if that's because of me or because she's just that generation. So I think things do change. So I do hope that the more vocal we are about not having children, what that means, and, 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 the disenfranchised grief, grief is so important because we can't move on to find the life that we, is still as fulfilling and as brilliant because we're all so bogged down with either not having children or that being told children, that having children, that's why pronatalism is so dangerous because we hear that it's the most amazing thing on earth. And my fear is that it is, and that's what I've lost. But for some parents, it's not. So if we were all honest about it and we all kind of met in the middle, we could all have these incredible lives around it, regardless of what it, what it stands for. And it's all about language, isn't it? So if we're called derogatory terms, that adds to the bigotry against us and that adds to our thoughts about us. But like I say about the age thing, 50 mm -hmm. is different now. So maybe being single and childless is different now. Because I, I interviewed uh, two friends of mine recently and they're much younger than me. And the piece was about that, just saying, you know, what 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 is such a beautiful relationship and it's like how are we so close and we are and it's genuine and I asked their opinion of me about certain things and it was so lovely and it wasn't you know you know it wasn't a woman who had uh, her life was so shit she made money out of it it wasn't loser it wasn't spinster it wasn't this they thought I was refreshing they thought I was free they thought I was liberated they thought I was broad-minded they thought I was relevant. I'm not saying this to, about me. I'm, this is us. This is us. Mm -hmm. And yes, I, I don't want to be us to be guilty of hemming ourselves in because of our pain. And I think I've done that. And But I understand why I've done that because, like I keep saying, my energy is spent railing against the crap that's thrown on top of me, on top of the pain of me not having children. And I'm fighting that. And if that was gone the societal crap, I could then just look at the pain and then get to a different season that you've talked about, Naomi. Do you, do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah, 100%. Definitely that 100%. unpacking. Yeah. I think we should have a bit of, I think we should have some optimism that things are moving forward. And people still, we, I was doing, um, I was working. You, that's another way of saying a word, though. What's your word then, baby? Like, how do we how do we reference this cohort of people that are have all this to, to offer? You know, we're we're the amazing aunts. Um, we're the people who are carers. We we give our time. Uh, we talk are talked about as being people who can be uh, people can look at us with oh they're selfish because they haven't. Um, given their, their life to children, um, despite the, the understanding that we've gone through an awful lot of grief. But in actual fact, we're the ones who have provided a whole lot of time into volunteering in our communities, caring for people or family members, um, and providing uh, mentorship uh, to, um, to, to family or friends or, 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 or family. So I, I wonder, um, what what the word is or references that we can can call ourselves that does have a positive note behind it. We need something new, baby. Come on. I got we... Listen, I get paid for my words. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> How much are you gonna give me? Um I almost I'm gonna say something so cheesy, but I'm I don't can't we just use our names? Can't can't BB yeah. be enough? 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can't our names be enough? Because there are people, do you know what? I'm going to say this to you. Have you ever seen the episode of Curb where um, Larry's friend pretends he's died because he wants to see the eulogies. He wants to see and hear the eulogies at his funeral. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I've seen different instances of it, but it exactly. Is, yeah. And I did the equivalent of interviewing Anna and Jack for this feature and hearing what they think about me. I swear to God, it was such a beautiful, empowering experience. And we kind of, I just wish we were all there. And I don't know, I don't know how we get there because if you're grieving, and you know, everything we've said is so is real and it's relevant and it's pertinent and it's painful but it could also be positive. And, you know, so I just think if we could, if, when, when people introduce themselves as a mother, I'm gonna be like that anyway. So I'm instantly, if, to, I'm gonna say again, someone that's gonna get me attacked. If someone introduced themselves as a mother, I think less of them because that's what they've mm. chosen to come in on. If that's what you've chosen to come in on, I don't know what that says about you. I don't go in with, I'm BB, I'm childless, I'm BB, I'm a spinster, I'm BB, I'm a bachelorette. <laughs> I'm BB, I'm a pink lady, I quite like that one. Um, you know, I'm none of those things. I'm me. And that should be enough. And maybe we're moving to a time when that's enough that, you know, people don't have to do anything other than be them. Yeah, that's that big one where people start qualifying their statement by saying as a mother. Yeah. And then that therefore um, infers that they are an expert at whatever they're about to come out with, mm. which is so, um, so untrue. I, I think um, I'm going to ask ask another question around do, do we feel like we're represented in media and, and books and things like that um, and, and movies because um, it kind of speaks to that a little bit. Um, I, I did a search on um, Google, you know, good old Google, and the first articles that came up for this year were around why is being single and child free so threatening to society? That was in... Um, uh, I can't quite see, uh, on Lit, Lit Hub earlier this year. Uh, on Newsweek, there was, I'm 60, single and childless, so worry who will care for me. And then in Gloss had one, the reality of being 40, single and child free. And when I read the article, she's actually childless. It was comes back to that point of she wanted to have children, but now she identifies as, as child free. And um, adults, single and childless, is that the future of society? We can see stats are showing that there are less people that are having children, whether it be from circumstantial delaying and not being able to have. And uh, while the motherhood penalty is well documented, single childless women can face unique barriers, researchers say. That was in the Washington Post recently. A lot of things that are coming up in, in 2022 in, in the media, uh, but I did notice that there were a lot more articles in the last couple of years, and I wondered if that was because of COVID. Um, people who are on their own have been noticed for the for the first time because even though at the beginning of COVID it was the family and the focus on them it did start to become a part of the the conversation around people who are on their own and, and you know oh we need to look out for them too you know make sure but I'll come back to my point about um the the media do you think do you think we see enough of uh, representing the single and childless in general movies have you seen a movie where where it's I'm single and childless storyline in a uh, in a positive Jackson. light no no it That's seems right. that, that t like I love my soaps and it seems like that tv writing is very lazy sometimes around this subject especially it's a mother's love it's shorthand it's things like that you know well you know you don't know you're a, you know, you're not a mother and it's you know it, that's a mother's job so there's you know so I see the opposite of us represented all the time the COVID thing was interesting because I was working somewhere where we had a weekly zoom and um I live on my own you know obviously no kids no no nothing no nothing and um but great hair and there was and during this call someone at the top of the call just went oh just a shout out to all the parents because we're going through this, we're doing the homeschooling. So I let the whole call go, and then I went at the end. And a shout out to people who are doing this entirely on their own, not leaving their house, not seeing anyone, no financial help, freaking out about it. No beautiful chubby child to cuddle at the end of the day, even if you had to homeschool them and it's, you know, it's all been a bit too much. We all have our pressures 
they're, they're, they're different, but some, there are so much on Twitter. If I hear one more single person talk about how stressed they are, oh my God. And this is something I'll say about all of this, because I don't want anyone to think, look at this and just think that we're, we're comparing grief and we're doing this, we're doing this. We're balancing the, the view because we wouldn't have to come back with stuff like this if, if as a mother didn't exist, you know, as a parent didn't exist, mm -hmm. hardworking families. I mean, maybe we were seen a little bit more at the end of COVID after we were all killing ourselves. I don't know. But now the cost of living crisis, that's not being recognised. Single people, it's all mm -hmm. about family suffering. I have a family and I have five, six siblings. Well, they don't pay my gas bill, weirdly. You know, it's, it's, it, so I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't see myself represented anywhere. Although, what, what would be brilliant, like Schitt's Creek, where his character, it was never discussed that he was gay. That wasn't, that wasn't, that was just, that was part of the story. There was nothing against it. There was, it didn't need to be mentioned. Wouldn't that be amazing if there was a, a, a single childless midlife woman who was just having her great life and not having, and, and, and the thrust of it wasn't, sure as thrust is an, an appropriate word, is wasn't about um, that she didn't have kids. Someone's just put murder she wrote on the chat. <laughs> I see that and some other like the, you know Dolly Parton, Kylie Minogue and, and um, Dolly. Oprah. but one of the books that I've read recently and I listened to this with a girlfriend who's also single um, and, and childless is Alexandra Potter's book Confessions of a 40 something fuck up which was brilliant as an audio to listen to um and it basically does follow her being for the for the most part single and childless and covers a few things I thought it was brilliant um and she's doing a follow-up and she's also turning it into a, a tv series which is happening at the minute has it has it come out yet do we know do you know baby no I don't know no I'm but jealous. look out for I'm that too, one I'm too jealous to research it to, yeah um which is fantastic and i was looking through my other books i've, I've got another one from uh australian author um donna ward who wrote um she i dare not name uh, a spinster's meditation on life which is also more of a, a true story but the um and it, it's a brilliant write she just writes very honestly about her life as uh you know a single person who doesn't have kids and she doesn't focus her the, the not having children as part of her it's more about um being being single but that confessions of a 40 something fuck up look out for it um look out for the the series it's going to come out to because she's actually got some good um good actors who are coming in to play in that one too. yeah all right okay we don't need to hear more about this success um i'm going to ask another one <laughs> Well, you get that this is more in the market and this gets you better visibility for when you pitch a story, baby, that you're going to put out there. That gives you, you know, yeah, that's what we need. So write your, write your script, baby, write your book, write your script, get it in there. Um, holidays, holidays on your own, singles tax, what's it like? So is it a problem? Can you go on holiday without, with no problem being single? Is it easier if you're in a group or with a couple? Um, do you know what I do? I go, I go traveling with um, G Adventures and um, uh, the other one I've just forgotten has fallen out of my head. Um, and they're brilliant because it's often single females who go on them as a means of being able to travel and still be reasonably intrepid intrepid is the name of the company thank you for that <laughs> excellent, excellent name that makes sense um they're, they're brilliant for for being able to travel and still feel reasonably um like you've got people around you but still having a chance to do whatever you want and um experience a country in the way that you want to um yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Do you have, you have thoughts around the holiday and travel experience? Um, I've gone through different phases. Sometimes, like I went through one and I was like, I do not like going by myself. I don't, you know, it's just too much time alone. I think that was more around COVID. Um, 
I did just recently go on a five day one and that was better just because I'm like, if I wait around for everybody, I'm not going to get my holidays in and I'm too much of an adventurer to do that. Um, I've never tried a travel group, but hopefully in the future I can. Yeah, I think it just depends on where I am with other things. <laughs> like, can I stand more time by myself or, you know, am I traveling to a place where I would feel more confident? or comfortable with other people, you know, depending on the country or whatever. But um, I, I'm i hoping I'm getting to the place and good again, where I'm okay traveling by myself, just because not all my friends are available when I'm available. So um, that's the sucky part of it. Time. Don't you worry okay. about that. It's over. Yeah. But I do, it. yeah, I do not like the price of traveling solo. Um, I would love to have a better hotel room, but because it's only me, I usually have to go for the budget ones. Um, yeah, so that's the downsides of it too, because, you know, finances are part of that factor. And so, yeah. Yeah, it does. It does make a huge difference. Baby, what about you? I don't travel on my own. I've never done it, but two of my girlfriends do and both love it and um, Lisa and Mandy and Mandy said something really interesting again I interviewed her about it um and she said actually it's become her thing so every year she'll travel somewhere and, and even if it's three you know for three months like really great things do and that's kind of her equivalent that her parent her friends that her parents get excited for her about so it's not her baby it's not that but it's it's kind of something that she feels that she can bring to the table when you know do I mean it's it's her excitement it's her story it's her thing she does and it's something that maybe people are envious of that she does and it's you know so it's nothing but positive for her she loves it I don't I don't think I've ever traveled on my own I I actually the the times that I have felt the the most comfortable and in my of myself and within myself is when I've been away traveling on my own each time I come back from a trip where I've been away on my own I feel like I am really settled with what I what my beliefs are and what I, I see are the things that make me happiest um, and that is not having you know and that can be for anyone it doesn't matter who you are um, just being able to, to to cut back to the basics and travel just with what uh, you need and uh, coming back. It's beautiful to come back to your own bed, but God, it's a good feeling when you're away. And, and I'm, I'm going to have a chat, you know, I'll talk to anybody. And after years of traveling, also have a, a pretty good sense of, you know, my, um, my, my senses, my tweaky senses on if something's um, a, an all right situation or not. You know, and those are the things that I've learned. You know. How do people respond to you when you're on your own? Um, pretty good. It makes me more um, open to, for people to approach me, actually. And, and that can be, you know, I guess some people can be, have a, you know, don't come near me. Um, it's lucky I probably don't, haven't, my creases haven't created my resting bitch face yet. Um, so I'm reasonably open to people approaching and having a conversation so you know I find it okay and if I you know there's ways of making yourself open or or not to, to conversations you're like I'll go happily go to a restaurant on my own um, and then I had this this happen in Berlin I went to a, a restaurant for a port knuckle which someone had highly recommended and then ended up um, meeting someone at the table who da, did uh, like a couch surfing show people around the city and so he gave me a tour of we off after eating we went off on a walking tour uh, of Berlin and he said I just love to do it like it would, never would have happened if I was sitting with a did with you a see group Port Knuckle? Knuckle? yeah Port Knuckle in Berlin it's a German thing <laughs> <laughs> it was a big deal this place was known for its Port Knuckle okay if you, if you want to know, I'll find it, but yeah. Um, we're, we're coming really close to the end of our hour. I, we, we could keep talking for ages. This is awesome. You guys have been fantastic to talk to. But I've got to ask um, a, a final question for, for us is, what advice would you give to the, the single and childless who are watching, who are coming behind us? And I know we're in our, our 40s and 50s. 
what advice would we give would you give to those who are perhaps in their you know 20s and 30s on on how to navigate what's coming ahead of them or what they're in I know it's a it's a big one and it's so different for everyone so it will be you know based on the experience that you've had um oh while you ponder the question I can I can answer I, I think that um for me it's around finding your people like finding those that uh, are able to relate and talking about it as difficult as it feels and as much as you feel and think that you're doing this on your own um have the conversation with people who are also you think are um, possibly going through the same thing and seek help if you need to get get therapy I wish I'd, I'd started and seen someone earlier to be honest um, it, it's it's not something that's insignificant disenfranchised grief is a big experience to go through um, and going and seeing someone uh, professional about it it's a, a totally valid and a very worthwhile exercise to go through. Um, I only wish that I had have known and done that earlier in my, my journey personally. But having people that I can relate to and talk to has been leaps and bounds in just feeling normal, feeling like I'm part of a crew that I, I don't feel like the odd one out. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe. I would say, yeah. 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 For me, what always comes up is don't think like something's wrong with you. <laughs> I think we're told like, if you don't have somebody, something must be wrong with you. Like we get those messages a lot or how to fix yourself to get a date or like all these messages. And I'm finding like, there's nothing wrong with me, <laughs> you know, or nothing um, more wrong with me than anybody else that's partnered. Maybe I should say it that way, you know? And so it's just like, it just doesn't, that comparison of, well, I must be doing something wrong because I don't have this. So I think letting go of that thought is kind of empowering. It is empowering. Um, and yeah, like you said, find your people um, that you can relate to and really lean on when you know those tears come and you just have to process something or vent and um and I think just and I don't know how I came across the language or how I came across Jody but I think um like I'm thankful I did because it gave me language to what I was feeling and it gave me acceptance to what I was feeling and so um and I think that could have come through therapy for me at an earlier sign, potentially. I mean, I've tried therapy and some were awful and um, really did not say nice things. And so I think it's really leaning into um, getting the help that you think you may need and to know that you're not alone on this journey. Um, because there's, as we know, a lot of us going through it. Um, and so finding your people, that's what I would recommend. Thanks, Naomi. Baby, what about you? It's a really tough question. I think everything you've said, find your tribe, um, but also know that your tribe can be people that you know that do have children. People can be incredibly supportive, you know. And also there is some, I was about to say, don't believe the hype. And I don't want to lessen the joy of having children because that is what I personally am grieving. But... I'm going to say another cliche, grass is not always greener. And I think there, there needs to be some kind of, I think I've romanticized it a lot. And actually the truth is somewhere in, in the middle. And I think if you know that, then you can kind of find joy in your life. Okay, so my friend Woney, his name's Wayne Anthony, Wayne Tony Woney. He's a, a musician, producer, engineer. And he says, when he's in a recording studio, a band will come in and they all want to create their baby. They all want to create their baby. Their album is their baby, but they do it in different ways. Some can be uh, a rock band, some can be uh, just instrumental, some can be heavy on the bass, some can have, it's country and Western. They're all approaching it in a different way. It's grime, it's, it's, it's rap, it's this, it's this. But they're all coming to that, they're, they're all doing it in the way that makes sense for them. And so I kind of think, allow yourself to just be you and be fierce and be fabulous and just be, 
don't, don't take shit. If someone says something that you don't like about it, let them know because that's how they're going to learn, <laughs> hopefully, eventually. But have no shame around it and just be proud of who you are and know it's part of you, but it's not you. It doesn't identify you totally. Thank you so much. It's awesome advice. I have to reiterate, uh, BB question, the drunk question. Did we cover it? No, the drunk the one question, that you when, you, when you were off your face and in charge of a laptop, you got yes. to me and said, um, what are the positives of being single and childless? And you thought I was drunk. <laughs> but there's so <laughs> many things. I, I, I wanted to ask that, we, we literally have run out of time. But I think there's so many fantastic things. And if that is being drunk whenever I like at whatever time of the day, <laughs> so be it. Be it. So be it. <laughs> did you have did you have a did you have one that you wanted to throw in there? What's your favorite thing? No. I do know what, I'm I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Okay. It's kind of like, and I do think, and I honestly, it's been inspiring talking to you both because I do wish that I'd gone on this um, healing journey earlier, the gr accepting the grief and then facing that earlier. But I'm there now. I'm getting there now. And um, you know, what's that expression? If it, you know, the best time to do it is some. The best time to do something is ten years ago. The second best time is now. So, yeah, it's very true. Mm -hmm. Plus, you know that you can decide what you want to do when you want. And you're not don't have to answer to anyone, baby. That that's yeah. got to be one big takeaway. We're yeah. we're totally in control of our 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 vehicle and where we're headed. Yeah, you've got everything. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's incredible. And I think because we've been so conditioned to believe that what we've got is less and will never be a, a life, you know, a life that, to be proud of or fulfilling. Um, that went in, and it went in. Mm. But hopefully now it's coming out and hopefully it's coming out and hopefully, um, you know, yeah, shit will change. I read, I, you know, I look at it and it's amazing that, and I, you know, I'm privileged that you're sharing that, that with us because when I look at your intro, you are such an accomplished person. You, you are speaking and writing and uh, podcasting and broadcasting and doing all of these amazing things and, and yet you have this... Um, uh, this this tenderness of something that um, it is not uh, you're not can't quite comfortable with. So thank you, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. That's really lovely. You're, you're amazing. Oh, stop it. We all <laughs> stop it. We all are. But we, we um, I do insist that you um, all pretend to die and get your eulogies in because it's a really lovely thing. <laughs> Maybe that I know um, I, I'm influencing Steph, not influencing. Um, we did one this year about writing to our, our younger self, but perhaps we should have one, um, a topic, yeah. writing our eulogy. Yeah. Just throw yeah. it in, Steph. Yeah, cool. it in. <laughs> nice. And I thank like you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Naomi, and thank you, Bibi, for, for joining me on today's chat around the, um, for me here in the evening, having my um, my vino and for for Bibi having a, a tea or a coffee, is it? Decaf, and decaf coffee. Coffee. And Naomi, you've you've managed to, to refrain from, from all that. That might, well, I had my Thai tea, so <laughs> my little. My tea, oh, we've got okay. tea, oh, we've got, we've got, we're covering all yeah. our bases here in the single and childless world. Thank you yeah. so much. And I'll, I'll ask you. you. A great job. Yeah, thanks for leading it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the great chat on the side. Um, Steph, where can I...